Dear viewers, welcome to this episode of One on One. Our guest tonight is Anga. She is 25 years old, a singer, songwriter and composer. You must have heard her melodious voice several times on the radio or even seen her music videos on TV. Tonight, we are going to discover more about this rising star and her musical journey. Anga, thank you so much for joining us in the studio of the MBC. Thanks for having me. It's such a pleasure to be here, always. <laughs> Anga, as a child or even a teenager, you've taken part in several talent shows or even singing competitions. And as an adult, you've chosen to pursue music as your career. Yeah. How did you develop uh, this interest in music? This is all thanks to my parents. I was born and raised listening to music, going to concerts, everything. And at the age of, of seven, I remember them taking me to the embassy to take part at Timambo wow. with my elder brother. It was such a nice experience. And then as the years went by, we just was into music, just a part of me now. <laughs> so initially, we can say that music was a passion for you. Yeah. And as a child, I knew that you've learned piano as well. Yeah. So what drew you to that art of music to play an instrument as a child? So then again, as a child, I was not thinking much, you know, it's just parents introducing you to new things. I was doing sport as well and music and they made me learn the piano because my dad wanted to see me play the piano. And I thank him today because this is all thanks to them that I'm into music uh, to begin with. Yeah. But was it hard for you like, to keep up with studies and learning music as well? Or it was like you wanted uh, to do that? I wanted to do that, but it's true that at the age of 15, it became a bit more difficult to cope with music and academics. So I had to make a choice. I choose academic at 15 because I needed to mm. pass my exams. Like every teenager is the same worry of everyone. Uh, but I catched up very soon on music after that, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> Anga, music plays an important role in the life of most human beings. I think that it is, just, it is more than just a mere source of entertainment. Yeah. Listening to music, listening to songs, may help someone to elevate the mood or even to perform a work in a better way. You have been in this industry for a few years now. What does music represent to you? Oh, it's true that music is a cure to many illnesses, you know. You feel bad, your mood is low, you just listen to one song, you just watch a music video and then your energy is lifted up again. So it's true that um, one of the main reasons that we are doing music ourselves is that we want to be that positive change to in human people surrounding us, humans' lives, you know. You rightly pointed out because I also feel that music has that liberating effect because for me, when I'm sad, I'm listening to one type of song. When I'm happy, it's another. And it's also very magical to see that how music can connect at the same time to our emotions, but also elevate our mood. That's true. It's totally that music, what music is made for, you know, to make you feel something, to make you change and finally be who you want to be. This is one of its many powers. And we have nowadays so many genres, so many types of music, but what do you perform? What is your style? So we had had a lot of questions putting to what we do as music here because it's a new thing for Mauritians, you know. We're not used to this kind of genre, as you said. It's called indie pop. <laughs> what is it's that like, exactly? I grew up listening to British pop culture bands like The Killers, Coldplay, it's my favorite bands of all time, uh, U2, Amy Winehouse, and this is my main inspirations. And thus, what I do is indie pop, like it's um, alternative rock, trippy music, and it's mainly pop music as well. This and is it. Uh, why have you chosen that style? Do you feel that in a way it appeals more to youngsters? I think it's appealing in a way that it's very colorful, fresh, and you know, pop. That's why youngsters love it. But 
but there's a lot of grown adults who love it too and we're proud of them. <laughs> yes, it also in a way connects to the youth identity, right? Yes, yes, because I myself started this musical journey, this musical project at 19 and then I released my first song at 22. I'm now, I'm now 25, but I'm, I'm a grown-up kid, you know? I'm learning, going with the flow. Everything is just new for me, and everything I wrote is coming out now, so there's a maturity as well, but still appealing to the, to the youth, which is Learning which is I'm a never-ending process, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> Your first single was Remember Me, what was the motivation to do that single? What was your main inspiration? So Remember Me was one of the first songs we composed with Cédric Cartier, which is my partner in crime. <laughs> he produces everything that I made. He's my label. And we were sitting down at the studio and thinking about how we must create that one song that will make people connect to us like we, we haven't released anything yet, you know, before. And then he, he's the one who composed the music to begin with, Cedric. And he had this riff on the guitar and he said, please write something on that. And I was like, sincerely, I don't write songs. I can't do it. I love to write poetry, everything you want, but lyrics, I think it's a big more difficult but he was the one pushing me into doing that and uh, I remember we were at the studio he kept playing the song on a loop and then the lyrics just came in and we thought wow that can be a good song the inspiration behind is um, you know as a teenager as I said I was 20 something uh, we all went through boyfriends and heartbreaks <laughs> and love and everything and this was inspired by a past lover where <laughs> like amour de jeunesse and um, yeah the the reminiscence of something young wild and beautiful that we have at some point to to m move on from yes. because we need to grow we need to we are becoming something else as the years go by and this is it remember me is about well remember me <laughs> for everything we've been through this is beautiful but now we're moving on yes that's beautiful so it was based on personal experience then yes i, I got to say this first album this first album because we, we have created a lot of other songs after that is mostly about personal experience people surrounding me Everything, <laughs> yeah. Anga, remember me, was elected as Hit of the Year 2019. What do you think made the listeners shower their love and appreciation to that song? We were really surprised, you know, because it was out on September 2019, and then on December it was elected Hit of the Year. We were not expecting that at all. And I don't know to... To reply is just that I think that it was new fresh and people just connected to that and we are very grateful for that <laughs> I think also because of the universal team heartbreak like you've said everyone go through that so it was easier to connect to that song in some way or the other yes and then there's a, there's a I don't like the word branding because we're humans you know but we have a beautiful team behind Anga. Mm -hmm. If you, we yeah. were talking about the music video a bit yeah. before. Uh, there's a story behind each music video it's and important. songs, and I think that people like. But there's a, there's a unity and team behind everything. It's just not one person. If it was just me, I wouldn't have been here. You know, there's a team behind me, building up, bringing up all the colors. It's always about team, like it's a team that helps you to achieve your goal. That's it. It's a big industry where we are surrounded by professionals, photographers, <laughs> video, uh, music producers, and everything is just accumulation of everything to make it what it is today. Yes. Uh, Anga, you are launching your debut album uh, this year, and it's titled Remember Me. Yeah. 
what is the concept uh, behind this album and what inspired you to, to do an album now? So just for the little story, our album was supposed to be out last year in April, but due to COVID and everything, we decided to push it, it. Yeah, postpone, push it, it. postpone it. And it was a good idea, Bo. Uh, not good for the fans, you know, who are waiting for it. Yes. But uh, they made up their mind and they are okay with that now. <laughs> because good things take time and we've worked harder on the album. We brought in more songs. So now it's an album of 14 titles. We've uh, one collab and... Uh, a lot of beautiful songs about Mauritius and everything surrounding me again. And yes, I hope it... <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> it and it consists of, of how many songs, the album? So there's 14, 14 songs. There's already five titles which are out yes. with their music videos on YouTube. Go watch them. <laughs> uh, there are three of them who are on all digital platforms and the rest is coming with the uh, album release. It's going to be out in September. We are excited. We are working on a big artwork for the album Pockets and everything. By the way, if people want to pre-order the album, it's totally possible on my website, anga.mu where they can be among the first to receive the album when it's out. I'm sure our viewers as well are impatient to listen to that new album and enjoy the songs in it. Anga, why did you choose the title Remember Me for that uh, debut album? Uh, I think it was an idea of Cedric, to be honest, because I always come out with a lot of weird names and okay. I said, no, we can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> and um, he said, Remember Me is fresh for a brand new album and it's a bit um, meaningful for us as well because mm -hmm. it was our, our first single and the one single, the one single that um, made us known to a lot of emotions. It helped you achieve a lot of success, that first single. Yeah, so that's why I think Remember Me is the winning title. <laughs> Indeed. And like you've mentioned earlier, the album consists of 14 songs, five tracks, uh, namely Remember Me, Charlie, Sweet Wild, Home and Nuchizil have already been released. Yes. And they all talk about a specific theme, spe a specific emotion. But how was your experience while writing each song? So the writing process is... Uh is a crazy one, you know, because you never know when the inspiration is gonna strike, but yes. then you have to go and look for it. You know, it's not just that I'm gonna sit here and wait that it comes. Sometimes I sit here for days and nothing comes, you know? It's crazy, but I'm really lucky again to have Cedric pushing me into <laughs> working, actually. And uh, inspiration come in many ways. Sometimes I'm just uh, walking on the street and I remember, for example, Sweet Wild. Yes. I was working in Port Louis. I didn't release any song yet. I was on a bus to the office and I had this song in my head, like this melody. I took my phone out and was trying to record that because, you know, everything is precious <laughs> in music. We need to record it. So I recorded it and I was looking at people that I hope they don't think I'm crazy. crazy you are. <laughs> <laughs> and then I wrote the songs and when I came back home at the studio, I told Cedric, what do you think of this song? And he was like, it's great. And that was Sweet Wild. <laughs> but for Charlie, um, home, home it was during the lockdown of last year. Mm -hmm. We were like, we are really helpless. We can't do anything. We don't have live concerts anymore. We don't know if it's ever gonna, if we're ever gonna be Come back, out of that, go yeah. back to normal yes. someday, you know? And we were like, let's make a song because that's what we do. <laughs> so we wrote Home with Cedric and uh, it was a crazy experience because everything was homemade, produced at home. 
And then for the music video, we asked all our friends around the world to send us videos of what they, what they actually doing during this lockdown because it was a global thing. And um, yes, we sent a song. We sent the song to our producer, and that was home. <laughs> That's actually very interesting. Yeah. Anga being a singer, songwriter, or composer is not so easy. Share with us your creative process while singing or while writing a song or even composing. So it's not, not easy, it's just the, the what you're going for in life, you know? Like you're doing a great job too, sometimes you, you stumble upon difficulties, but that's what you love, that's what exactly. you think you're born for, so you just do the it. The passion. The passion is here. So for us as well, the creative process is sometimes um, it's sometimes tricky because you really want to write a, a song that will go, that will travel the world, that, we, that people around the world will listen to. And then you are hear like you have just Apple on your mind. What are you going to write with that word? <laughs> you know? But... How we do is that we drink a lot of water. Mm -hmm. That's one of our main things okay. we do because it's important to stay hydrated. hydrated yes. And then we go to the beach. We, ins we, 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 we look for the inspiration. You know, you, you, just, you can't just sit here and think that everything will come to you. It's hard work and patience and talent. <laughs> that might be a good tip for our uh, would-be songwriters or even artists. Yeah, for sure. Anga, we've recently been in lockdown like four months ago. So what were your hobbies during that period that served as a source of inspiration for your musical projects? So over than music and listening to music, I discovered a passion for sewing. <laughs> okay, yeah. I bought a sewing machine a bit uh, before the lockdown, like beginning of this year. Just for the fun of it, I really like clothes and everything. So I started sewing during the lockdown just to, to change my mind and to do something new, you know. It's always good for your energy to do something new. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the relationship between music and other forms of art, for instance, video, has become increasingly important. How do you see this uh, relationship yourself? And in how far do you feel that music relates to other senses other than hearing alone? That's a really good question, girl. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you, know, you know, I love doing music videos because it's... Um, way of expressing of talking about the song without singing it you know you're just dancing or doing things and music video is a, is the greatest way to perform the song and it's true that it's important to have something to accompany yes. the music because it's just art you know it needs to be entertaining and and fun at least for me, I, I want all my songs to be pop, colorful, and exciting. And they are. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And you know, I also feel that when something is visual, we tend to connect to it easier. And also, in some way, it helps you to, to transport to another world, like escape the reality. Yeah. I was just looking back, back at uh, Sweet Wild this morning mm -hmm. while doing my sport, and I was like, as in Mulan, he's crazy. Like he's the director of that song, and I remember when he first uh, brought the script, I was like, "What? <laughs> a blue wolf in Mauritius walking around everyone?" I was like, "This is crazy." And we said yes <laughs> automatically. And shooting this music video, it took it took three days to shoot everything, but of course a few weeks of preparation and it was like the best days of my life like i want to do music videos all the time and crazy things like that <laughs> and your latest single is Nutizil. yeah it is a music video and it mainly describes the beauty of our country mauritius yes how was that experience for you 
So Nutizil is close to here because uh, we really love our island. Of course. <laughs> we, <laughs> we love <it's> paradise. <laughs> yeah. And we live close to the beach, so we get our main inspiration then there. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember we were at the studio. We had that song, that melody, which stuck with us for maybe two years, and we didn't know what to write about it. And Cedric just said, why not write a Creole song? And why not write a Creole song? And I was like, wow, this is the first time for me. I'm not sure, but let's try. And then I had uh, my acolyte, Emmanuel Desroches, who is a great artist, great musician as well, who we have the chance to work together for, for a year now. And we made a one-week residency where we uh, composed the song and didn't write the lyrics yet, but composed everything. Um, I remember it was a magical moment, just thinking about everything that Mauritius is bringing to our life, like everything positive that the island can, can do to us living here. Um, and that's it. The lyrics are very simple because our love is simple, Mauritius. Quand tu vins l'homotisil, mon poufet toi, causer, rier, lever, danser, lever, vibrer. This is what we do when we meet people from. It comes from the heart, maybe. Yeah, yeah it's from the heart. Mm -hmm. And exactly. uh, what are your ambitions now as a singer, songwriter, or even a composer? Ambitions. So, release the first album in September. And then we have a lot of uh, exciting projects coming too, apart from the live shows, which was a bit uh, in pause for the moment. Uh, we wrote a song recently for the Codan Art Center, which is a beautiful new way of working, you know? We, we like doing collabs and writing specific songs for specific groups, and I, we hope that this is gonna come more because we really love to get in inspired by things like Code Art Center, we love being here, and everyone who works, who work there are so friendly, and it was very easy to write a song for them. It's called It's Just a Coma with Vincent Brassen and Emmanuel Desroches. And any advice you would like to give to our would-be artists or songwriters who hope one day to make their dream come true, like you've done? Advice, pursue your passion. <laughs> work hard nothing will come to you like free and I guess you need to pray a bit <laughs> for your luck to to come to life and be close to who you are and be kind be kind be humble do what you need to do that was indeed very motivating <laughs> We are actually drawing towards the end of this episode. But Anga, before we let you go, please sing a few lines for us. Oh, so I'd like to sing a few lines of Nutizil. <laughs> okay. Quand tu vins le Nutizil, mon poufé à toi, que rié, levé danser, rêvé vibré. That was so beautiful, Anga. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thanks for having me. It was, it was a, a pleasure meeting you. It yeah. was a pleasure to have you here. <laughs> and I wish you all the very best for your career. Thanks. And same to you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Dear viewers, we have now come to the end of this episode. Thank you for your time. We will be back next week at the same time, same channel. For now, enjoy this song of Anga from her album, Remember Me. Have a great evening. <laughs>